Good Wednesday afternoon, everybody. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandagis with an update for you on the tropical Atlantic and the tropical Pacific that right now is getting ready to pop. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It is August 12th, 2020. Before we get into things, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And after you watch the video, if you like what you saw, hit that like button as well. We'll have plenty more videos as we get deeper and deeper into the hurricane season. A broad overlook on satellite imagery of what's going on in the Atlantic Basin. We're watching one storm and a difference from yesterday to today is it's now a tropical depression. It's tropical depression number 11. Now you may be saying to yourself, wait, we've only had nine named storms so far. How are we at number 11? Well, remember when we were talking about Issa Eas last week. There was a sneaky little storm off the coast of Africa that very briefly became tropical depression number 10. It lasted like 12 hours and then decayed and fell apart north of the Cape Verde Islands. Now we have tropical depression number 11. If this does intensify, which it likely will, we're like right on the line of being a tropical storm. It'll be Josephine and that'll be our 10th named storm of the year so far. Here's how it looks on satellite imagery. We're looking at the infrared filter on here it tells us the cloud top temperatures. The colder, the stronger the thunderstorm activity is. And in these last couple frames on satellite, eh, I mean, it looks OK. There's nothing really pronounced here. We're not seeing any of the darker uh, blacks or whites showing on up. That would indicate very cold cloud tops, strong thunderstorm activity. But it isn't really being influenced by the wind shear that we saw yesterday. So thunderstorms that are there are starting to completely surround that center, which protects it and should yield it away from any of the dry air that's in place as well. Visible satellite imagery, a lot more impressive looking on this filter here. You can see that center is completely uh, getting surrounded by the uh, convection thunderstorm activity, and it's starting to show textbook activity here of a tropical system that is growing and organizing. We have the feeder bands coming in from the north and from the south, bringing moisture in at the low levels and then outflow aloft, meaning it's ventilating properly and it's organizing and strengthening day by day. However, the dry air, still a huge problem out there in the Atlantic Basin overall. And you see here on water vapor imagery, dry air and the moist air, there's a lot of dry air out there. And that's the orange and yellow completely encircling our tropical depression right now. And the threat for this getting choked out is pulling some of that dry air into its circulation in the coming days. It's going to have to ward that off because all the other things going for all the other variables, low wind shear, very warm sea surface temperatures, are there. It's just the dry air that might hinder things a little bit. In terms of the sea surface temperatures, I mean, going forward, this is its forecast track. It's going to get progressively into warmer waters. Not only is the skin of the ocean very, very warm and very easily able to sustain tropical development, but the ocean heat potential is there too and growing. What this is, is that the heat that that's the surface actually extends down to a depth when you get tropical storms, tropical depressions, hurricanes, they mix up the ocean waters, right? And they do something called upwelling, which mixes up cooler waters from below up to the surface. Now, if you have that warm water extending down through a depth and you have a storm moving over it and mixing it on up, it's not really pulling up cooler waters. It's pulling up progressively warmer waters as well. So as we're heading into this area, as we're getting closer to the northern tip of the Leeward Islands, uh, that ocean heat content is pretty significant and is only going to get more significant into the peak of the hurricane season with the daily heating of those waters. Here's the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. We're going off the 11 a.m. advisory. We'll get another update at 5 o'clock, and I wouldn't doubt it. In fact, I'm expecting it at 5 o'clock for this to be upgraded to Tropical Storm uh, Josephine. If not then, then at the 11 o'clock advisory for sure. The forecast right now does call it for becoming a 60 mile per hour tropical storm at its peak right now. It could certainly be a little bit higher than that. Intensity forecasts are the toughest with tropical systems, but the track does take it right now to the west, but eventually gets a northerly component and skims to the north of the Leeward Islands here by the time we get towards this upcoming weekend. Notice as we get farthest out, that cone does get wider, but it does start to signal a turn off to the north, eventually to the north and to the northeast. And I'm going to show you why in just a second, why I don't think this is going to be impacting the east coast of the United States. Let's look at the models now with tropical depression number 11. Looking at each line here, this is what we call the spaghetti plots. Each line is a different computer model. Pretty good consensus early on. Then we see a little bit more of a spread farther out in the future. But most of the models, if not all of them, do take it just to the north of the Leeward Islands. And then a big spread as we get north of there, north of Puerto Rico, as it takes a turn to the north and to the eventually the northeast. 
Now let's look at the GFS. We talked about this in past videos, but this is the GFS Ensemble. It has 21 members. It's basically the GFS model run 21 different times, and we tweak it just a little bit to get a slightly different outcome, and we see what the consensus is on all of those. Here they are running on out to the next couple of days. We have a pretty good consolidation here, and then a bigger spread starts to develop. And as we go even farther out in time, notice this is hinting at that northern turn. Why is that? It's going to interact with an incoming trough from the northwest, and not only is that going to introduce shear to the atmosphere again, it's going to start to tear the storm apart, but it's also going to lift it north and eventually shove it out to sea. And I don't think it's going to be affecting any major land masses, the United States at least, but may impact at least as a decaying system, Bermuda. We'll have to watch that closely. Now let's jump over to the Pacific. Lots of activity there. Alita, which is now a tropical storm, barely at that 65 mile per hour winds at the last update. But you see here on satellite imagery, it is certainly struggling. Peaked at a category two hurricane just 36 hours ago. But why is it falling apart? We need the warm waters, right? It's straying away from that. In fact, getting into pretty chilly waters here off to the north by the end of its life cycle here into the upper 60s. So has no longer a fuel source and will fall apart at that time. Here's that official forecast. Probably the last advisory will be issued from the Hurricane Center by either late tonight or early tomorrow or even tomorrow night if it does hold together. But that's not all. There's a lot of activity starting to flare on up there out in the Pacific Basin. Numerous areas that we're watching for development here. In fact, three of them now are up to a high chance of becoming at least a tropical depression or even a named system. So why all of a sudden is there a big flare up of activity in the Eastern Pacific? Well, it's something called the Madden-Julian Oscillation, the MJO. You may have heard forecasters, meteorologists, scientists talk about this. And what it is, it's an oscillating pattern that progresses across the entire tropical ocean circumference of the Earth. It takes about 30 to 60 days to make one complete pass. There are two phases with it. There's the enhanced phase and the suppressed phase, okay? And this provides large-scale upward motion in the enhanced phase or downward motion in the suppressed phase. Now, how does this have an impact on any tropical weather? Well, it provides a large scale environment that is favorable in its enhanced phase because it's providing a lot of lift, right? You need to make that air lift, cool and condense into thunderstorms. Thunderstorms eventually start to circulate around a center of low pressure and we get tropical systems to develop or an unfavorable setup in the environment during the suppressed phase. What's going on right now in the Eastern Pacific? The enhanced phase of the MJO is currently moving on through there. And eventually, within the next couple of weeks, it will track off towards the east. That's what it does, west to east, move into the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and eventually the tropical Atlantic. By two weeks' time, we're getting even closer to the peak of hurricane season, so expect there to be a big-time uptick in activity in the Atlantic Basin by the end of this month and into September. All right, that's the latest update today. If you like what you saw, hit that like button. We'll have another update for you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.